This Wibbit.net webisode is brought to you by Adafield. Within minutes, Adafield transforms any document into a data collector. Simply import, prepare, and present. Adafield takes care of the rest. Give your sales team the ability to capture the value in every human interaction. Visit Adafield.com today for more details. Hey everybody, welcome to another Webisode episode. This is Kevin from Webit.net, and what I want to do in this video is hopefully a really quick instructional video on how you can solve the SSL trust issue with the Mirth Connect administrator port. So if you are in any type of integration work or you do you use Mirth Connect to build web services or, or anything like that, you know that by default Mirth Connect will install its own self-signed certificate, and when you try to access it on the the admin port, which by default is 8443, you're going to get a certificate issue. Now, for the most part, it's no big deal. You continue to this web page, which they don't recommend because it's technically not secure, but I mean, it's encrypted. It's just not a trusted certificate. And, uh, but see, even my web browser here is not even allowing me to access this server. So hope or this this web page. So hopefully, what we can do is work our way around this. Now, what I also want to demonstrate is both of these are running on the same host. So I mean, this is just some generic host inside of my network, and you see that over here it is trust. It is trusted. I don't have any certificate warnings. I could refresh this, and I just get my IIS page. And when I just connect, I connect to regular port 443, but when I connect to 8443, I'm getting a certificate problem because Mirth Connect is not using the certificate that I'm using here. So what I would like to do is hopefully show you guys how you can do that. So let me uh, remote over. So I've remoted to that server right now. And I do have Mirth Connect running and installed on this machine. And I can just prove that pretty easily by just launching Chrome. HTTPS colon slash slash. So I'm on the machine. I connect to the admin port for Mirth Connect. And I'm able to go to the uh, Mirth Connect administrator or the Mirth Connect web admin where I can launch Mirth Connect and do all my stuff. But you can see that I have a certificate error running on here and I'm not even able to access over it, it over here in my Spartan browser. That web page is just not going to let me do it. So let's try to fix that problem right now. So on this web server, so I've gone back to the web server. Let me run over to IIS. And you know, I'm actually doing this because... Um, this has been something that I've actually been asked a bunch and I've had to do this before and people, you know, love it when you, people love it when you don't have any certificate problems that makes them feel good about themselves because uh, certificate errors just makes you look cheap, right? So we'll go to IIS and the first thing I'll do when I go to IIS, I'll just go ahead and click on my web server and I'm going to export my certificate as a PFX file, which will encapsulate both the private and public key. So on the server certificates, I have, this is the actual SSL certificate that I have. No, it's not actually issued by a trusted authority, but it's trusted on my local network just because I've set it up that way. So if I can export this certificate, I'll just go ahead and stick it on my desktop for right now. And I'll just call this SSL cert dot PFX. I'll just give it a simple password. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay. And now I have that certificate on my desktop. So now what I have to do is run over to Mirth. And before we get going further, let me show you a couple of things. So it should be in like program files, Mirth Connect. Okay, so Mirth, this is the, um, the key store that Mirth uses. And inside of here, there is a, uh, a key the, the SSL certificate. Now, I also want to point something else out to you guys. There is a uh, configuration file. It's um, inside of the config folder. It's mirth.properties. Let me show you real quick. Just in case you've never needed to do this, you can see that, you know, you have your, your port specified here, but you also have the path to your key store as well as you know, passwords for your key store. And this is by default. So it's really important that we have this password because we're going to need it in just a little bit. So, um, you know, you could change this or do whatever, but this is just what the default one is for right now. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is actually add our certificate to that key store, remove the existing certificate, and then make this one our Mirth Connect SSL certificate. So let me go back to my app data. This is my key store. So I'm going to run out to the interwebs. Let's run over to Google and I'm going to download a utility that um, I don't really know how to pronounce, but I know that I, I, I pronounce it 
porticle, although I've heard it call it portacle or portecle, and I've heard it called all kinds of things. So it doesn't really matter what it's called. This is what we're going to use. So let's go download it. So the SourceForge page should have a download. So I'll just go ahead and download it. it comes in as a, as a zip file. Now this is going to this is going to be a uh, a Java a Java jar that we're just going to execute, and we're going to use this to import and replace the SSL certificate encapsulated inside of that Java key store file. All right, so it downloads. Cool. Let's open it up. And I'll just go ahead and drag the folder to my desktop. We'll just delete that later. All right. So let's uh, open that up. So it's just going to be the jar file for portacle, portacle, portacle. I don't care what you call it. It works. That's all that I really care about. All right. So it's a nice, you know, crappy looking Java Swing app. <laughs> so what we want to do is open this key store file. So I'll just copy that path. Click on open. Paste that in here. And we're going to open the key store file. And it's going to ask us for the password. And the password is inside of the mirth.properties, which we saw is in wherever mirth is installed, config mirth.properties. Let's just go ahead and copy that and paste it in here. So you see that there's a couple of things in here. We have this mirth connect certificate is what's used for SSL. You'll see that there's two keys in here, which means that it's both, it has both private and public. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and I want to add my SSL certificate to replace this. And then I want to use the alias name of mirth connect. So mirth knows how to do, how to do this. Now I wouldn't recommend doing this on a live system until you have experience doing this on a development system because you could screw it up. The other thing that you can do, which I'll just go ahead and do it is just make a backup copy just in case you screw something up. So we'll do, we'll do key store dot backup. So that way, just in case we screw something up, we have a backup. Okay, so let's get started here. See the, the one that says Mirth Connect, I'm going to go ahead and right click on it. And uh, if we go to certificate details, you'll see that this was issued by Mirth. So this is a self-signed certificate, and that's why we get that, that error message. So we'll go ahead and right click on it and delete it. Boo shaka, it's gone. Okay, so then we're going to import this PFX file that I exported that is my SSL certificate on this particular machine. So there's a couple of different uh, things here. We have the, um, the generate key pair. Nope. Import trusted cert. Nope. We want to import key pair. So there we go. So I'll import that. Click on that button. All right, so it's going to want me to navigate to this one. So it's on my desktop. So we'll just run out to desktop and you'll see we have the SSL cert.pfx, which again, that's the certificate that we exported using IIS just a little bit ago. And the password that we set was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay. All right. So then it's going to ask, you know, what do you want to import? So this one just has one key to import. So that's what we're going to do. Now it's going to ask us to enter an alias. Now I, I want this alias to say mirth connect and then hit okay. And then enter the new password. So the new password for this is going to be what the old password was for the other one. That way we don't have to make any additional configurations. So I'll paste those two in there and it was now imported successfully. So I've replaced the self-signed certificate with the certificate that was generated by a, a CA local on my network or a certificate that I generated myself that I have trusted on my network or on my client machines. So to finish this up, let's save the key store, close it out. And I'm going to just take this PFX file and delete it. All right, so now let's restart the Mirth service. So we'll do uh, services.msc and we'll locate the Mirth Connect service and then stop it and then start it. All right, now let's see what happens now. So if I minimize this and I go back to my web browser and um, let's see, 8443. Now I'm able to connect to that without any certificate problem. And if I look at my certificate, it has been identified and everything is good to go. So I hope that this was useful information. I know that um, the very first time that I had to do this, it took me some time to figure it out. But uh, you know, now I can do it with my both my hands tied behind my back. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure that you comment. You can send me an email, kevin at whippet.net. Thanks for watching. See you in the next webisode.